This is the Power Break Podcast number 062, titled, A Mighty Fortress. Hi, I'm Bob Brubaker, along with JT, as we hope you'll stay tuned as we seek to give you a little power in this break to help you succeed in the race of life. This is the Power Break Podcast, with a focus on the spiritual, the mental, and the physical aspects, all to help you succeed in the race of life. For show notes from today's podcast, go to BobBrubaker.com and follow the link for the Power Break Podcast. Hola, my friend. Oh, there You're you looking go very again. Hawaiian. So, <laughs> Hawaiian shirt yeah, today. I don't yeah. know why I said it in Spanish, but uh, anyway. Aloha is Hawaiian. Yeah, yeah, I said hola instead. So, like, like Aloha. A dummy. Aloha. Uh, yeah. <laughs> there he goes. That. He's uh, going to be singing. Uh, uh, the white sandy beach tiny of Hawaii. Bubbles. <laughs> oh, tiny bubbles. Oh, tiny bubbles. That's my grandmother's like favorite song. Well, JT, uh, you know, we, we've we been on this podcast now for uh, quite a number of months here, just a f- actually a few when it uh, put it all together. This is program number 062. So it's crazy looking here, back on it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we've, yeah. we've had a good time. Oh, it's man. It's been, uh, it's been such a blessing for me. And it's. It's apparently been a blessing for people. Yeah, our audience <laughs> a lot continues of people to grow. are actually listening to yeah, it. We, so, man, we, we thank everyone for insane. taking time to, to subscribe to our podcast and listen to the podcast each week, and uh, also give us a review. And uh, uh, when you there, be sure to put uh, a number up for a rating as well. Yeah, we appreciate yeah. that. So helpful. We do appreciate it. All right, JT. As we consider the subject today, where do you turn when you need a refuge? Oh man, there's only one. That is something that as I've gotten older, I have come to learn over and over and over again. Um, the only source of strength for me is the Lord. There period. You go. Um, yeah. And that is just through trial and error because you start counting on people and inevitably you end up getting disappointed. You start counting on objects, inevitably you end up getting disappointed. You mm-hmm. end up going to these different things to try to make you feel better. You always end up disappointed, but man, you go to the Lord. It's 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 the refuge. It's the fortress, like you said, the mighty fortress. The mighty fortress. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How about you, my friend? Uh, when things get tough, uh, uh, you know, it's so easy to try to take things in your own hands. That's just our natural way we do things. Oh, I mean, yeah. You have to learn. Yep. I can't do that. Nope. Uh, even the Apostle Paul had to learn that. So, um, yes, you're right. Turn to the Lord. It's, of course. Uh, That's the place to go because we all need a refuge or a place to turn. And Psalm 46 is what we're considering today. It gives us a great consolation there. He says in Psalm 46, verse 1, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. In verse 7, it says, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Then in verse 10, he says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations and I will be exalted on the earth. Well, the Lord of hosts is with us, and the God of Jacob is our fortress. Here's the thing. Did you know that Psalm 46 was the basis of Martin Luther's hymn, A Mighty Fortress? You know, I didn't know that until I read your power break. (laughs) (laughs) So I cheated a little bit. Okay, well, he actually wrote it to encourage his friends who were facing great difficulties. They stood for God's truth during these days of what was known as the Reformation. And, uh, well, anyway, that's why he wrote it, and it has become a beloved hymn ever since. A mighty fortress. Yeah, you know, let's continue to uh, talk about that as we turn to your blog. At BobRubaker.com, folks, if you have not subscribed, I would highly encourage you to do that. It is such a source of strength for me when it comes in on Monday. I sit down, focus on it, make it a part of my prayer time. So good. But let's continue to talk about that, Mighty Fortress. It doesn't really get any better than this. Really. Well, actually, it, we're close to the time of uh, an anniversary. On eight, October 31st, 1517 was the date. Well, anyway, this famous hymn written by Martin Luther was written around that time, around 1517, somewhere in the 1500s, based upon Psalm 46, and it was called A Mighty Fortress. Now, the hymn became the, really the battle cry of the Reformation in a way of encouragement to all who faced the persecution of various sorts for standing for the Word of God. What began when Martin Luther posted his 95 theses on the door of the church at Wittenberg on uh, October 31st, 
15, 17, wow. uh, which were complaints against the various doctrines and practices of the Roman Catholic Church at that time that were in direct conflict with Scripture. And as Martin Luther was tried in a place called Worms, it was called the Diet of Worms. <laughs> now, we, which, we, we it's not lost on me, then. Yeah, okay. We, we yeah. sometimes don't get the, the entire uh, German translation, but it was a place called Worms, and the Diet was a trial. So he was there. He was offered freedom. Uh, if he would just recant everything he had written. Man. And Martin Luther boldly stood and said, here I stand and I can do no other. And that became kind of a, a theme. You know, here yeah. I stand, I can do no other. That kind of boldness and standing for what was right was before God and became the theme of the Reformation that spread through Europe and England and beyond with the boldness of the people that came, the consolation from the hymn that Martin Luther had written called A Mighty Fortress. Here are a few of the words uh, you might know. it. I was going to sing it, but I decided not to know. I would really <laughs> enjoy you singing it. Actually, when uh, Jan read my script, uh, you know, for my power break, she said, you think you can get JT to sing this? Oh, no. <laughs> Man, like I said, I, I, have a, I, I have a voice that nobody wants to give me a microphone Man. and make louder. Yeah. Well, anyway, the words are, A mighty fortress is our God, a bulwark never failing, our helper he amid the flood of mortal ills prevailing. For still our ancient foe doth seek to work his woe. His craft and power are great, armed with cruel hate on earth is not as equal. Did we in our own strength confide, our striving would be losing. We're not the right man on our side, the man of God's own choosing. Just ask who that may be. Christ Jesus, it is he. Lord Sabaoth, his name from age to age the same, and he must win the battle. Let me pause right there. Do you know what Lord Sabaoth, sometimes people who sing this song have no I have no absolutely clue. no idea. Yeah, Lord so I'd be Sabaoth one of those guys. is actually Lord of Hosts. Really? Yeah. So, so the Lord of Hosts is his name. And so, there you go, Lord Sabaoth, his name from age to age the same, and he must win the battle. And though this world with devils filled should threaten to undo us, we will not fear, for God hath willed his truth to triumph through us. The prince of darkness grim, we tremble not for him. His rage we can endure, for lo, his doom is sure, one little word will, shall fell him. That word above all earthly powers, no thanks to them, abideth. The spirit and the gifts are ours through him who with us sideth. Let goods and kindred go, this mortal life also. The body they may kill, but God's truth abideth still. His kingdom is forever. Man, so Great good. words. Yep. The hymn really captures Psalm 46, as we mentioned, that it portrays a very present help in trouble. And so one of the things I did in the, in the power break was to go through Psalm 46 and look at God as our present help, our, our provider, and our protection. And it all comes back to when we hear that theme, um, that song, uh, a mighty fortress is our God. And you hear that about this time of the year because it is a celebration of the beginning of what was known as the Reformation. And it's a good hymn sung in churches from time to time anyway, just as a way yeah. of encouragement. And it draws us back to the the beauty of Psalm 46 and the great uh, blessings that we have as described there, how God is a mighty fortress that we can take refuge in all the time. Yeah. I, you know, a couple of things as I was reading this on Monday popped into my head. The first one was, A, would I be able to do the same thing, right? Because hmm. you look at, this was... Hmm. This was above and beyond, um, you know, just not getting a raise at work. <laughs> this was, you know what I mean? His life like, was at stake. His yes. life was at stake, and at stake. And I don't know if people really understand that. Yeah. Um, but the and the other thing that pops in my head is, um, I bet you, because he was given that by God, he was given that role by God, and he mm -hmm. embraced that role that was given to him by God. I bet you it was because he was faithful in the little things, and he kept getting oh, more well, and that more was, and his, more. His desire for truth really uh, was superseded anything else in his life. He tr he tried to live by all the principles of righteousness by works, yep. and he just said this is a dead end. And so he became uh, familiar with uh, righteousness by faith alone in the Lord Jesus Christ as he was actually teaching the book of Romans yeah, in the seminary. Man. And uh, he became so staunch on that. And then uh, he became um, really upset with the way that the things were going in the Roman Catholic Church at the time because they were uh, pushing the indulgences. Yep. And um, 
And so he, he, he wrote 95 complaints against the church and against the Pope, and uh, they, they took it to heart and <laughs> came against him. What did they ever, yeah. Yeah, and uh, actually when they did throw him into prison, he took the time to translate the Bible, actually the New Testament, into a common, ordinary German uh, language. And so the people who had never heard the Word of God in their own language, because it was always in Latin in the church. Yeah. So yeah. now they had the Bible uh, in their own language, and it was made a quite a difference in many people. As a matter of fact, that's what really led to a lot of things of uh, people following in the, the lines of Martin Luther and others in the Reformation. I I, I will tell you, it, you know, you don't have to go back that far. When I was a kid, um, I was in the Roman Catholic Church in Massachusetts, which is one of the older dioceses, mm-hmm. right? And um, it was still in Latin. There was still significant portions. The majority of the mass was actually in Latin. And I, I will tell you as a kid, I didn't hear the word of God until I went to college. Wow. I didn't actually hear scripture. Um, I actually would hear quotations from like my grandmother and stuff like that. But I didn't actually read scripture or no scripture until I went away to college. Wow. Um, and then, um, when I started to go back to church, it was in a reformed church. It was not in the Catholic church. So yeah, I, man, when you hear it yourself, when you read it, when mm-hmm. it becomes alive for you, man, that's, that's what Christianity is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah it says yeah. faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of Christ or the right. word of God, you know, and, right. and that's what it says in Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Well, check it out. It's the, the article is called a mighty fortress. You'll find it at Bob Uh That's where the power break blog is found. And uh, as JT says, please subscribe to it. Anyway, the power break blog, the mighty fortress at Bob Brubaker.com. All right. So what's happening, Bob? Anything new? I wanted to take some time and uh, talk about my book called The Power in the Valley, where I've looked at the various valleys in the Old Testament. There's the Valley of Achor, the Valley of Baca, the Valley of Blessing. Um, Anyway, this and Baraka. Anyway, it's valleys all over the Old Testament. Yeah. (laughs) I was starting to talk in Hebrew. You know, we were talking in Latin. Good luck with those. Okay, yeah. Valley of Blessing, the Valley of Tears, the Valley of Achor, which is the Valley of Trouble or Affliction. There were about 10 of those that I looked at, and um, I started to write on these things years and years ago when I first was uh, in the ministry, and I did sermons on them and wrote about them. And I first started out with the Valley of Achor, which is the Valley of Trouble or Affliction, and found out it says there that the Valley of Achor will be a doorway of hope. And I said, Wow. And so when you think about you going through times of trouble and difficulty, it actually becomes a doorway of hope in your life. That's phenomenal. Yeah. Well, that's what God does. And so um, I continued to write about that. And finally, a publisher came and said, why don't you um, put those together? And that's what I did. And it's called Power in the Valley. You can find the book uh, and the link to the book on my website, BobRubaker.com. While you're there, check out the sermon links to my uh, sermons that I preach here at Christ Community Presbyterian Church, currently going through a series in the book of Philippians. What an exciting book. Oh, you're not lying. Awesome. Yeah. Anyway, check it out at BobBrewBaker.com. Three. All right, so here we go. It is time for What About This? That is the time on the podcast where we go through questions and answers. If you have a question for me or Bob, go to JT at BobRubaker.com uh, and send me an email. Once again, that's JT at BobRubaker.com, and we'll get to answering that on an upcoming Power Break podcast. Are you ready for question number one, my friend? Uh, fire away there, JT. Why was the hymn, A Mighty Fortress, so important to Martin Luther and other reformers at the time? Well, they were going through quite a time of persecution. Boy, were they ever. And everywhere they went, there was persecution. Matter of fact, uh, their people were being killed um, because of their faith in Jesus Christ and because of their stand for the truth of the Word of God. I think you've probably heard of the solas, you know, sola scriptura, which means by... Scripture yeah. alone, sola fide, yep. which is by faith alone, sola Christe, which is Christ alone. Christ anyway, those, alone. Yep. there were five solas, and they stood for those, and all brought back to the Word of God. Well, they need to be reminded of something. And Martin Luther wanted to remind his friends to keep pressing on that they had a mighty fortress. And that was what it was much like the Apostle Peter said in his writing of Second Peter chapter 3. He said, this is the second letter that I'm writing to you because I want to stir up your sincere mind uh, by way of reminder. And that's what Martin Luther was doing. 
Uh, or as the Apostle Paul said, whatever things are true or whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there's any excellence, if there's anything worthy of praise, think on these things. Okay, so put yourself in the mind of those reformers. Uh, they were preaching, they were teaching, they were leading God's people, and they were being persecuted. Yep. And uh, this went on for years and years and actually decades and centuries. And so Martin Luther's hymn, A Mighty Fortress, became a real source of strength because it reminded them of Psalm 46, verse 1, God is our refuge and strength, the very present help in trouble. Or those words in verse 10 of Psalm 46, to be still and know that I'm God. Where God just says, calm down. I'm in, I have everything under control. I will be exalted among the nations, and I will be exalted on the earth. And so, again, the psalmist writes and says, The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Yeah, so to, just to continue question one. So that would be the same for us, to be reminded of God's faithfulness, and we can find refuge in him as our fortress, right? So that's really part of it as well. Yeah, that's, exact, that's exactly why people love to sing that hymn. Because it just reminds, it stirs up, especially yeah. if you it happen to be in a church with a big organ. They have a lot of big background and they really play it hard on that. I, I miss I love, the big organs. Yeah, I do. Anyway, yeah. so, yeah, we, need, we all need to be reminded of spiritual truths over and over. And and because we, we never graduate to a time when we don't need those reminders. And hence, we need to encourage one another as we sing. And that's what we do in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 19. says we're to address one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. And uh, as we pray, we're to, as we hear others pray, we give thanks in our hearts. And either that's why we say amen as someone is praying. Yeah. So we remind the word of God and the things preached to remind us that God is in control. And um, that's why we need his word. Yeah. You know, when it comes to worship, when it comes to singing and when it comes to actually worshiping the Lord, I... I'm so passionate about it and probably even tend to try to be a perfectionist, even though I know that's not possible. But the reason why... And when you're singing? Not when I'm singing, when I'm playing guitar <laughs> and when I'm up there leading worship. Now, do yeah, you, there's, there's do you no sing sing. while you're playing guitar? Is I it, don't, no. no. Oh, that's too bad. I can, but I don't. I mean, they don't have a mic in front of you, so you could sing. Oh, no, I sing, but you can't hear it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Because it's it, it's loud enough on stage, thank goodness, to, to where you don't actually okay, hear I just me want, man, yeah, I mean, yeah. That'd be robbing you of great joy if you if you couldn't sing. Oh, no, no, I'm Somebody totally... Somebody said to you, please don't sing. Oh, no, 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 that would, that would not happen. No, no. Somebody just, actually said that to me one time. Just don't put a microphone in front of me, because nobody <laughs> else wants needs to hear me sing except the Lord. So, uh, but what I was going to say is, you know... It, it is Folks, such if a, you'd like to hear JT sing, just write to JT at oh, no. and uh, uh, we'll arrange for JT to sing. Yeah, and make sure you pick a song. <laughs> make it a good one that can't be ruined by my voice. Um, in Christ Alone is a good one that can't be ruined by, by yeah. JT's voice. But anyway, um, but what I was going to say is, you know, it is such a vital part of our spirit and the cleansing of our spirit. And I don't... Yeah, until I really got into worship, until I really got into um, the musical aspect of it and why it's mm -hmm. important and why, you mm -hmm. know, we, we need to spend time practicing and making sure we're good with our craft before we get on stage and doing all those things. It's, it, it's simply because it is a cleansing thing for people. So it's a vital part for me to get up there and, you know, if I know my lines and I know what I'm supposed to play, um, I know that I'm helping people... Um, worship All right you're cleansing you're them. calling them to cleanse sing along soul. yeah exactly yeah, along. and people yeah. you know when it's when it's when it's all done well and mm -hmm. you're actually you put some practice and time not perfectly but well that yeah that's it, there are a few things that are more important to honor god and to actually cleanse your soul than worship i, mm -hmm. I i've come to believe so well that's why people at this time of the year is, Maybe have to dust off the, the music a little bit of Mighty Fortress, but it's worth dusting off. I tell you what, I'm going to encourage our folks to dust it off for yeah. sure. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. So you ready to move on to the mental standpoint? Yeah, the men Let me think about that. <laughs> <laughs> that was really good. Hey, you know what it was? It's because you had a donut this weekend. Uh, That's what it is. In now honor of our favorite, <laughs> our favorite yeah. officer of the law. And JT. It, and actually, I want you to write into JT at BobRipbigger.com and tell me whether I should be insulted that he sent me pictures of donuts just because I'm a cop. 
Oh, no, wait a minute. No, wait <laughs> I'm just a minute. That was around. sent out of appreciation for out you. Out of love. And That's also right. the very fact that uh, the last picture I received via text from you happened to be at Dunkin' Donuts with the, the two. With the boys. Uh, yeah. Trebino no, boys. And so, <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. All right. So, from a mental standpoint, does it help to visualize a fortress? That God has us surrounded. That's excellent, JT, because the words of Psalm 46 really paint the picture. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Now, we're not, to, you know, we're not told to picture God. Of course, you can't picture him. We just take the pictures that are given to us in the scriptures. And those word pictures in the scriptures are there to help our minds grasp hold of this magnificent picture that God is our refuge and he's our strength. And he's very present. So no matter where you go, he's present. Yeah. Psalm 139, uh, David says, if I go here, he's there. If I go there, matter of fact, he knows my words before I speak them. He knows my thoughts before I think them. Yeah. I mean, that's how, how God is. And so it's, he says he's just marvelous. And so uh, Psalm 46, verses 2 and 3 says, therefore, we will not fear, though the earth gives way, though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea. Can you imagine if that took place? Yeah. Just picture that. He says, though its waters roar and foam, and though the mountains tremble at its swelling, he says in verse uh, four, four, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. That's calmness. Yeah. yeah. He says the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. Uh, she shall not be moved. God will help her when the morning dawns. Then in verses six and seven, the nations rage. The kingdoms totter. He utters his voice. The earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. And the God of Jacob is our fortress. And then in verses 8 and 9, it says, Come, behold the works of the Lord, how he has brought desolations on the earth. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the chariots with fire. And then verses 10 and 11, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted on the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Now, when we get our minds on that picture, that God has us surrounded. Yep. Well, who are you going to be afraid of? I mean, what are you going to exactly. be afraid of? If God be for us, right? Yeah, if God be for us, who can be against us? That's Romans chapter 8, verse 31 and 32. You're looking at me like you're expecting me to pull that out. <laughs> I'm just happy I know what I had for breakfast this morning, so I don't know why, <laughs> I don't know why you're looking at me like that. <laughs> oh, JT, uh, you and your... I, I think you got a lot of those things from your grandmother. What? Uh, oh, yeah. I know you're right about that. <laughs> well, we set our minds on the pictures that God has painted for us in his word, and we find great comfort. And that's exactly what Martin Luther was setting out to do, to remind us of those pictures that a mighty fortress is our God. We find great comfort and encouragement just to know that he is our help, and he is our protection. Yeah. You know, there's a, uh, there's a great... Um, uh, the last Hillsong album, there was a song that was written by, um, oh man, I, I'm, I'm missing his name right now, but he, um, he went through a season where he was having a lot of difficulty and he, and he really focused in on this, that God is his fortress. And he wrote a song called starts and ends. Uh, and I would encourage people to listen to it. The words are beautiful. And they, the, every single time I listen to it, I get encouraged mm -hmm. and, um, one of the lines is, if my heart is a battleground, my defenses run both ways. Um, and then he talks about how the flesh is a deceiver, but then he goes right into, but there's a comforter that comforts me. Yeah. And he talks about the Lord. And, man, it's um, so important to realize that um, that's your strength. Oh, right. Because then you won't ever be disappointed. Right. <laughs> and and how, how cool is that? Because most of us know that no matter what, you know, it's... If it's fleshly, it's going to fail in time. We right. get disappointed all the time in life. That's yeah. That's where things are. Yeah. But, all right. Uh, God never disappoints because he's always there. That's and it. he's perfect. And he's perfect. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Much much not like myself. Um, all right. Turning to the physical aspect of life. And this is kind of just a U-turn, but I love it. How important is sleep, Bob? <laughs> I, I put this in our, our, our time today because... Um, we neglect sleep a lot. Yes, we do. I uh, did some research on that. As a matter of fact, I listened to podcasts from these doctors and, and uh, people known as biohackers. Okay. And uh, sleep is much more important than we think. It actually affects our immune system. Yeah. 
Definitely does. Uh, we, we've always been told that. You don't lack sleep, you're going to get a cold or something like that. But actually, it does drop our immune system when we don't get enough sleep. It's actually a, what goes on is a, they call it brain clearing and filing. Wow. That's what actually was what is happening when you're dreaming. Your brain is clearing the files like we need to do on my computer, I guess. <laughs> yeah, because it keeps going <laughs> off and on and off. Okay, and, and, uh, and then it, it's filing things so that you can come back and get them. Yeah. You know, and think about those. Because every, everything that goes on in our lives that we see or think or hear or things that affect us, we, it's filed away in our brain. Anyway, there's also, a, they call it a brain cleansing takes place. Really? So when we sleep, yeah. It actually gets rid of impurities in the brain, okay? And uh, believe it or not, it, it, sleep is, helps to ward off Alzheimer's. Yeah, I believe it, yeah. Um, besides the re- rebooting the uh, or rebuilding muscle fibers as well. And so all these things take place when we're sleeping. Now, I, I, I was going to be wearing this thing I called uh, the WHOOP. <laughs> oh, I got a whoop. what does the WHOOP stand for? <laughs> Uh, I don't know what. Or is it actually called a whoop? <clears throat> it's actually called the whoop, and oh, actually it I broke because I was going to be wearing it today. So I wanted to talk to you about that. But it's interesting because uh, this thing I wear it it uh, it takes uh, my heart rate variability oh. and records that, and also um, records when I work out, and then it records in sleep. And um, it's interesting. Um, sometimes I thought I was getting enough sleep. And yet my whoop said my sleep was not very... Can I get a whoop, whoop? <laughs> <laughs> my whoop so, said, oh, I, said oh, that uh, whoever my named sleep that. was not very good and that I should not work out. Oh, and you thought you were in good shape, ready and to I go. I thought I was ready to go. But did I listen to the whoop? I said no. The whoop never <laughs> lies, Bob. <laughs> I went out and worked out anyway. But uh, nevertheless, I found that um, well, the, the, the actual... The, the, this, the device had broken, and so they're sending me a new one. Oh, no. And I didn't throw it on the floor when it told me to. When it told you not to work out? <laughs> I'm not listening to you. If it's broken, it can't tell but me not to work here's, out. Here's what I really thought. This was really interesting. Okay. The competitive person that I am, it turned my sleep into a competition. Now that I believe. Yes, <laughs> so, that I believe. So there was, I have less trouble getting to bed earlier so I can keep that whoop quiet. <laughs> 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 it, it's it's also like heaven sandpaper. Just like it, it's yeah. like a digital version of your wife. Get more sleep, dude. Uh, oh. I don't know. Yeah, that's probably true. true. <laughs> you know, I uh, I have a lot of experience in this category because I actually what I did not know because you know sleep apnea. I always just kind of assumed it had to do with weight and you know because mm-hmm. people with bigger necks are more likely to get. Um, to get a sleep apnea. So I always just kind of assumed, you know, well, I'm in good shape, so I don't really have to worry about it, but I've always been a snorer always. So, uh, finally my wife, thank goodness, guilted me into going to get a test. Now, years ago I got a test, but come to find out that the definition of sleep apnea has changed over time. Oh, so, um, Way back in the day, I only had a certain number of awakenings during the night. So that wasn't, consider sleep apnea well now they're like yeah not only is that sleep apnea but that keeps you from getting to something called delta sleep Mm -hmm. delta sleep is when you literally you are if somebody tried to wake you it would be like waking somebody who was really intoxicated your mind it's the only time your mind truly turns completely off And if you have sleep apnea, you never get there. Oh, wow. And that's when the rebuilding in your body it's takes place. It's vital that you yeah. get to Delta sleep. So um, I would encourage people, if you have any doubts whatsoever, to get yourself tested for that. Because I'm going up on over a year now, I've been on a um, on a CPAP, which is not the coolest looking device in the world. And, you know, I wake up and it's wrapped around my neck and there's all kinds of goofy stuff that happens. But my sleep is way better. Well, And let me tell you, talk about clarity of mind, talk about clarity of spirit, talk about a difference. Yeah, it's significant. So um, I'm really glad you brought this up, Bob. Uh, that's good. Yeah. That's, that's a testimony, folks. 
from JT. Um, also, they say they, rec- they recommend having a dark room. Make sure to turn off all the screens in your room. Room temperature is important and take time to relax before you go to bed. Better sleep requires, of course, discipline, and discipline makes the difference in all aspects of life. And so we encourage you to check out today's show notes at BobBrewBaker.com. Click on the Power Break podcast. Today's show is number 062. And submit your questions by email to jt at bobbrubaker.com. And listen for Bob's answer or my answer on an upcoming Power Break podcast. Well, JT mentioned about uh, a heavenly sandpaper. Sometimes uh, one old preacher called our wives that. And that's my wife helped me write a little book called Strength Training for Your Love Life, a 30-Day Marriage Challenge. And that's a book we'd like to encourage you before we take off today to check out on my website, bobbrubaker.com. <laughs> it is a good one. Strength Training for Your Love Life, a 30-Day Marriage Challenge. We challenge you to check it out at BobBrewBaker.com and order the book, Strength Training for Your Love Life. That's at BobBrewBaker.com. Well, thank you for joining us for the Power Break Podcast. Please subscribe and leave a review wherever you've downloaded the podcast. And check out show notes, news, Bob's weekly blog, and other cool things at BobBrewBaker.com. And listen next time for the Power Break Podcast.